Dragon Age 2 is going to be about consequence. It's a game about making hard decisions. As we talked about the plot for Dragon Age 2, it really came down to two potential stories. One, which felt a lot like Dragon Age Origins, and the second, which delved into a lot more about the actual lore and history of Dragon Age 2. The second option was the tougher option to tell. Uh, but we felt that Dragon Age needed to explore some different directions and some different ways to tell story. Hawk, the, the man or woman that the, the player steps into the shoes of, is a refugee. Someone who escaped the blight and spawned a legend. Hawk is going to be a different character based on the actual dialogue options you pick. And that was a lot of fun trying to come up with the good guy character who's going to sacrifice himself to do the right thing for others and the much more aggressive, I'm going to, you know, do whatever it takes kind of character. And of course it wouldn't be Dragon Age without the snarky sarcastic humor. She fills her days making poisons and cake. Tell me you didn't try the cake. How did he rise to power? How did he become the champion of Kirkwall? What's brought the city and, and later the entire world to the brink of war? These are questions that need to be answered. It, it's like um, one of those moments in history where people will talk about for centuries afterwards that I knew someone was there or read stories about the people who were there. So the player gets to be there at that pivotal moment. So we got together to talk about ways we could do this, the way we could tell a decade worth of history in a single game. And out of those uh, explorations, that's where the frame narrative came from. A story within a story became key. This is a technique you see in The Usual Suspects, you see it in Princess Bride. It's being told from the perspective of a character named Varric. He's a, a dwarven rogue storyteller. I've had gentler invitations. <laughs> Varric knew the player and he's telling the story to Cassandra, who is a Templar investigator who is trying to figure out what happened. Time to start talking, dwarf. They tell me you're good at it. But he doesn't always tell the truth. Sometimes he begins uh, telling the legend, the story that everybody knows about this character, Hawk, that was larger than life. Bullshit. That's not what really happened. When a book or a movie does a frame narrative, the narrator knows how things are going to turn out. But in a video game, we can't know that because the way you choose to play is going to affect the narration. And what's so very cool about this is while we can't really take credit for frame narrative, it's been used for you know hundreds of years, I think this may be one of the first, the truly interactive frame narratives. Thus began the champion's first year in Kirkwall, settling his debts with the mercenaries. That's when I first met the champion. In Dragon Age Origins, you traveled across the land, but in Dragon Age 2, you're traveling through time. We're focused on a more specific area. You see it over time. You see it evolve. You see it change. This, I think, gives it more depth. Relationships can develop over a period of years rather than just weeks or months. Been a while, hasn't it? I've been keeping an eye on you. And on one hand, uh, an adventure tale isn't necessarily about romance, but on the other hand, what adventure tale, what science fiction or fantasy tale have you ever seen that didn't have some element of romance? Wait, you're not thinking of bringing feelings into this, are you? And we were able to take them in some pretty wildly different directions from virginal girl next door to crazy up against the wall, let's have it on right here. And one angle that we haven't really targeted before is the sense of family. The sense that Hawk is not some character who just washed up on a beach with no history, you know, nothing, nothing to back him up. He's got a mother, he's got siblings, and they come with him. Will we see rivalry? Yes. Will we see jealousy? Yes. Will we see genuine affection? Yes. We're running from your bloody Templars. I'm in charge. You do what I say. Right, brother. So it's, it's obvious, well, you know, if I'm going to become the champion of Kirkwall, why bother playing? Well, the question is, what is a champion of Kirkwall? Is there a political significance? Do I command an army? Have I got some sort of superpower that no one's told me about? And in a lot of ways, you know, how you choose to play will help define that. It would have been very easy for us after Origins to sit on our laurels and, and, and just do what was already successful and not try anything new. But I think the thing that uh, Bioware does that's great is, is we're always interested in evolution.